Hey everybody, welcome back to Fast Money. I'm Kirby. That's Alex over there. See, I got it right the first time. Uh, today we're just talking about the state of the housing market. Where is it at now? Right now, this is the end of January. Uh, so we're talking about our perspective from the end of January 2023. Um, and then where we see the housing market at, what's going on, what we're doing, um, and what opportunities or lack of opportunities that's going to come in the future. With all that being said, Alex, first things first. So just in general, where do you see the housing market right now? I mean, what's the difference that you're seeing from 2022 till now? Just in the housing market in general, as far as listings and stuff like that. Um, I mean, I've seen prices come down. Uh, actively looking at properties right now, it's interesting to see that there's like, it seems like there's uh, competition. Um, whereas like, say with the property last year, like I didn't, there wasn't really any competition. I was like, I was like the only one inquiring about the property but like this year i mean just within a couple of days like i put in uh i was calling about that one property that i sent you and then within me getting the pre-approval letter like it sold and i was like wow that was quick then there was another one where the realtor didn't want to give me more information and i was like all right so then i moved on to the next one the one in georgia and then i was calling i was texting them and i was trying to get a reply and then it sold. I was like, wow. Okay. <laughs> and so it's like, now I'm trying to reach out on another one and I still haven't, I haven't gotten a response. So I'm going to keep reaching out and see what happens, but it seems like there's more uh, competition, but again, I'm not as heavy into like making multiple offers. Like maybe you are, so maybe you have more experience with uh, really what the volume is, but I can just go from my experience. Um, but I have seen, and, uh... mm -hmm. Go ahead. What's the question? No, I was just saying, but I have seen uh, prices uh, come down. Um, just even in my area, some of the homes that I was seeing in 2021, you know, selling for 450, 500,000 are now coming back down to the high 300s. So, you know, I have, I have seen that as well. Yeah. Um, just taking it back a little bit. I remember last year we, you know, put it out a couple of videos and said that the housing market wasn't, we want to go get that 08 crash. We got a lot of, you know, hate mail about that. Some guy said, bro, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what's going on right now. And the thing is, I do know what's going on right now. And probably that guy, he was probably sucking his thumb in his mom's basement when he sent that message. Uh, for people that don't know, I was around during the 08 financial crisis. Right. I was buying homes at the height of the bubble. And stuff like that. So I know exactly what's going on. Um, but when I said we wasn't going to get the 08 crash, I'm still sticking by we wasn't getting the 08 crash. I did say we was going to get a crash in transactions, meaning that how the houses was just flying off the shelf back in 2020, 2021, we wasn't going to get that in 2023. I mean, Alex, the the area, the houses that you're looking at that you that's been off the market real fast, that's in a lower competitive market. And it makes sense. It makes sense for them to still be getting deals, especially the two that you sent me. The deals cash flow wise was insane. Somebody be crazy to pass up those deals. Right. But all in all, the other the other properties that's that's out there, they're not flying off the shelves like that, especially when you get start getting up there to the median house price in the United States mm -hmm. or over the median house price. Those houses just sitting on the market 20, 30, 80, you know, 120 days. I've seen some. Uh, but like we said, and we've held strong to it, I know I've held strong to it, that we was not going to have, and I still don't believe we will have price drops like the uh, 08 financial crisis. I just don't see it because there's not a lot of inventory. People have good debt on their homes, meaning 30-year fixed at low interest rates. So for a majority of America who, who are living in homes right now that have the low interest rate, it is cheaper for them to live in their house and pay the mortgage than it is to rent. In the inverse, back in uh, 08, when people had the arm loans and different things like that, had the teaser rates and stuff like that, when those teaser rates adjusted, it cost them more money to live in their home than it did to rent. So people was walking away from homes and was like, well, I'll just go rent because it's cheaper. You know, my house is underwater if, and it's way cheaper just to rent, walk away from this house and just do it all over again in seven years after I might file bankruptcy or whatever. And that is the difference between the two. 
And the inventory is not as highly elevated. There's not as many foreclosures as it was before. Again, going back to the you know rate terms that most people have in America, especially people that refinanced and bought in 2020, 2021, and early 2022. So we've been steadfast on that. Uh, the prices did come down. We said the prices was going to come down. We just said it wasn't going to crash like, oh, wait. And the reason why the prices was going down, interest rates uh, came higher. That means it was going to be less people borrowing money to buy houses because the mortgage payments be higher. And then the demand waned. And then the supply was still on there. And the people that had the supply on there, they needed to sell. They started dropping their prices to sell said property. But besides that, that's what we're going to see. We're going to see some nominal drops in some areas, but it's not going to be the fall off the cliff type thing. Um, and like you said, it's in some areas, and it depends on what market you're looking in. The market you're looking in, that you're looking in, very competitive. Florida, for some reason, People are still ready to bite people's hand off to buy property here in Florida. Yeah. But that's just that's just the way it is. And it's interesting seeing like houses in Florida, for instance, like a three two in 2019, you could probably get for around say 200 grand, like mm -hmm. right at around 200 grand. And now I'm seeing like uh like two ones uh half the size in square footage for like 250. And it's it's insane. Like, and those are still selling. You know, it's it's crazy to see. Even though the market has come down, it's still about seventy five percent higher than it was three years ago. And it and that's and that's a byproduct of inflation. It's a byproduct of you know, I buyers coming in buying up buying up houses at higher uh, cost in their worth. So that brought up the values of the neighborhoods that it was in. And then a lot of these, you know. Uh, we got a couple of companies out here buying homes and just renting them out, but they paying, you know, cash prices, you know, higher than ask, you know, all that stuff. So it elevated, you know, the tide lifted all shits during that, during that time. And then that's, that's where we're at. Um, like even in my neighborhood, I've seen some prices coming down, sellers giving some concessions to the buyers and stuff like that. But all in all, this market here is still holding up very, fairly strong compared to, other areas. Um, but that's just how the name of the game works. But we didn't come out saying, oh, we're about to have 30, 40, 50% uh, price drops and crashing like everybody else was saying. So we we was right. And I believe we will continue to be right. And that's, that, that's how the game goes. Will we see prices come down a little bit more? Maybe. Will I take advantage of any price dislocation? Absolutely. Currently right now, as you know, I got two deals on the table that uh, I close on one in two weeks. And then I got another one that I close on a little bit after that. And then that's just how I'll go. I will keep writing offers that on properties that will cash flow for me day one. That's that's the name of the game. So a lot of people ask you, do you, do you get this question? I'll ask you first. Is now a good time to buy a, a home? Do you get that? And if you do, yeah. what answer do you give them? Well, I usually, what I hear people say a lot, instead of asking that question, they'll make the statement of now is not a good time to buy. And I'll just say, well, if it's coming down, isn't that when you want to buy at a lower price? And they'll be like, well, yeah, but, you know, and then they'll have some kind of, like, it just like their logic doesn't make sense. It's just, but that's what they're constantly told, you know, now don't buy now, everything's coming down. But as we always talk about, if you're looking to buy a home, you shouldn't be buying it with the idea that it's an investment. If you're looking to buy a home to live in, buy it. Make so, sure. I got another question for you. So yeah. I'm using hindsight, but I know you haven't been in the game that long, but tell me a time in your lifetime, in your lifetime, where you heard it was a good, while you was in that present environment, that it's a good time to buy a house. Tell me when. Like 2021, 2022, <laughs> you know, buy it quick because everything's going up. Get it. Well, oh, I mean, but what, but no, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2021, that's when, you know, COVID was going on, especially 2020, COVID was going on and everybody was like, oh my God, we're all going to die. Everybody's locked up in the house. They were still saying it was a bad time to buy because they thought the house prices were going to close. Well, I was but, hearing people say to buy so before it goes up even more. Right. From, I'm just talking about but, average people, average people. But, but 
really those average people who's paying over asking price for homes, where are they at now if they're trying to sell them? They can't yeah. get them. They can't well, them. Of course. And the house is not worth it. But that's what I'm saying. Not even in, like somebody told me in 07, think of this, 07. Oh, this is a perfect time to buy. Yeah. Yeah. Guy, but you never hear every time it's always it's always bad like in 2019 the news media if you go to the news media oh no the market's going to come down the market did come down for like two two days for covid but there's no when at that moment there nobody's saying oh this is a great time to buy this is a great yeah it's a great time to buy but you couldn't buy nothing in 2020 20, 21, 22. Right. Well, you couldn't buy nothing normally. I mean, like in a normal process, as in, okay, I see a house. Okay, let me uh, do a walkthrough. Let me do a walkthrough. Let me figure it out, see if the number's right. Houses was going off the market like this. Yeah. So, so when was that buying environment great? I don't think nobody ever says it, but in hindsight, people are like, oh, yeah, if you would have bought back right. there in 2015 and 2016. When I was buying houses and rental properties in 2016, people was like, oh man, it's a bad time to buy. The market can go down more. It already took a 40% haircut in Florida. How far do you want to go? They want they want the signal to say, hey, this is the bottom. Everybody buy now. <laughs> yeah. No, you know what I hear a lot though is people saying, like, because since I'm actively trying to find a property this year. Mm -hmm. I hear people asking me or telling me, like, are you sure you want to buy right now when the market's down? Isn't it a, a bad time to buy? And they're like, you know, the housing prices are coming down, but they forget or maybe they, they don't forget, but they're just not educated on the fact that when you buy an investment property, it's valued based off the rents coming in. So if you could buy it at one price, bring up the rents, and now the, the property would increase in value based off of the rents. So the market can go down for single family homes and residential homes, but for multifamily or for investment properties, it's going to go based off of the revenue coming in or the rents coming in for the property, not based off of if it has, you know, what area is it in? Does it have granite countertops? No, it's just the rents coming in. And that's how I value. I mean, of course, I'm looking for decent neighborhoods, but I'm valuing it based off the rent. If you only charge a $1 a rent, I'm not giving you... $400,000 for the house, I right. only get $1 in rent. I'm yeah. paying, and that I'm, I'm, we're paying, investors are paying for the revenues that they produce. That's the, that's the name of the game. And people don't understand that. Only thing they look at it as, like you said, most people don't even have one house to live in. So they're only looking at, oh, the value is going down. I mean, trust me, I've, I've had people that so-called, you know, experts, that's what I'll call them. Cause they, you know, they, they, Thought they was big time real estate people back in the 70s, 80s, and they really weren't doing nothing. But they'd be like, oh man, the house price is going down. I'm like, I don't care. I care about the cash flow. Right. Cash flow. If the rent, if the mortgage is $1,000 and I'm bringing in after all expenses and I'm bringing in $1,700 a month, that's about $700 a month in cash flow. Well, I think I'm, I think I'm good. Even no matter if the value is going down. Even if the value is going down, I'm still bringing in seventeen hundred dollars a month, of, you know, seventeen hundred dollars a month in rent. So that seventeen hundred dollars a month in rent is going to let me weather the storm while all this, oh, the value is going down. Everybody's fear mongering, and then it would allow me to buy more properties at a cheaper rate and put them up for rent also, and then wait for this whole thing to go back up. When I was buying in fourteen and fifteen and sixteen here in Florida, fifteen and sixteen here in Florida, nobody else was buying. I mean, besides some smart investors, they was out there buying, but nobody else was buying. And everybody's like, what are you doing? The market could go down. And now these same properties that I bought back then, they did doubled and tripled in value. That's that's how it works. But for me, every day, every day is a good day to buy real estate if you're doing the work and doing the right deals. So, I mean, if I could have pulled one off, then I pulled one off. I know if I could have pulled one off in 20. 21, 2022, I did, did 2022, but 2020, 2022, or 2021, sorry, then I would have. But every deal that I had, and we got the video of you know, me putting in 10 offers and I'm getting rejected on all of them. But it happens. It happens. But I'm not going to go chase. I'm not chasing property just to chase it. I'm 
only going to find good deals that work for me. If they don't work for me, then it makes no sense. And like in Florida, the market's, you know, crazy, still crazy high on other properties. Most of the deals don't work for me. That's why I pivoted out to other states to find cash flow properties. Right. Um, no, and like how I was telling you the other day, how I had a tenant lined up for, or how I have a tenant lined up for to pay 1700 a month. And I'm looking in, in, uh, you know, on the East coast of Florida. And that's when I started hearing from people, you know, do you really want to buy now is now a good time. But the properties I was looking at are in the one thirty and below range. So if I buy it at that price, put in maybe, you know, five to 10 grand of repairs, and then I bring the rents to 1700 a month, you know, that, what does that do for my ROI? You know, it's definitely worth buying it at that time. It's, you know, but most people are just looking at, Oh, but you know, look at the house. Like they're just looking at residential homes coming down in value, but it, it's different. Yeah, they're looking at. Yeah, they're looking at. They don't have a house, and they're like, prices coming down. But the question is, is all right. The prices are coming down. So, what indicator are you waiting for? Not you, but what indicator are they waiting for? For them to say, okay, now it's the time to buy. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you what indicator they're waiting for. This is what's gonna happen. The mark, the house prices are gonna come down. They're gonna stop. They're gonna plateau. They're going to plateau going down. So it's just going to go sideways for a while. You know, or values going sideways. Then they're going to start increasing in prices. Then when the prices are back up to 2021 levels, then the news media is going to say, oh, no, this is a great time to buy a house. Yep. That's when they're going to do it. When the values that went back up, and if you don't believe me, look at the stock market. Look at the cryptocurrency market. When Bitcoin was down after the FTX debacle and Bitcoin was down 14, 15,000, nobody would touch Bitcoin at all. And you know, me, when it's down, that's the best time to buy. And then now Bitcoin went back up to 2200. Everybody's like, oh, oh, Bitcoin looked like an opportunity now. Think about the, think about uh, 2020. The market crashed. I remember I was getting on the airplane when the market was crashing. I was headed to Europe. The market's crashing. And then and then I'm I'm sitting there. They almost kick, they almost locked me out of the plane because everybody's on the plane. And I'm sitting here trying to buy as the market's crashing. And I'm over here buying, buying, buying. <laughs> and then the lady was like, she was like, we're closing the door if you don't get on now. So I threw in one more trade and then I got I got in the uh I got on the plane. Get over to Europe. Market's still going down a little bit, but still doing my thing. Everybody was scared, you know, news media saying, oh, it's bad. Then fast forward about nine months, fast forward nine months when the market didn't recover, then damn near double. Then now everybody's in here. Everybody's all over YouTube. Oh, now it's time to buy stock. Time to buy stocks. Now everybody's a professional. Everybody's a pro. People that never knew what a stock was. My grandma calling me up like, hey, what can stock can I get in, baby? Now what? <laughs> that that's that's how it was, and that's and that's exactly how it was. And now everybody's talking about stock when it's all the way up there. Why you want talking about it when the value was low? And right. then so of course that momentum and and of course news media. Oh, it's a good time to buy stock after it already jumped up a hundred percent. Same thing happened in 09. Market bottoms. Everybody. Oh, the stock market is crazy. Then the stock market goes up. Now people exit out their 401ks in March of 09. The stock market goes up 150% from there. Then you get, oh, it looks like the coast is clear. The recession's over. Now it's time for people to get to get in. You missed 150% move. And now you're going to get in at the top again. I mean, good thing that it kept going on for years and years. And then people just repeat history. They want to get in the market when it's going up and everybody's, you know, the roller coaster's fun. And then they don't want to get off when they see it going down. Then when they get all the way to the bottom, then they get off. And then they try to jump back in at the top of it again. It's because people don't do the work, man. That's the, that's the crazy part of it. In case people think Kirby's exaggerating, my mom told me of a lady she knows that was uh, that told her, yeah, you know, the since the stock market's going down, I pulled my 401k out. Once it goes back up, I'll put it back in. <laughs> I'm like, no, that's not what you do. <laughs> People really and, think and like I mean, this. you know, we talk we talk about it in the class, but when the when the market started going down, because we you know in the class we called it uh December 31st, 2021. I said, 
we're looking for we're looking for a down market and expected to go down hard. And that's what we got all of 2022. And then what did I say? I am going to put more money in the market now that it's going down than I ever had. And that's what I did. And then I'm still at that same clip now. Every month, every two weeks, I've been putting putting more and more and more the same amount. And then I, you know, I gave you my number of when I'm gonna stop putting that much in, but we're we haven't hit that number yet. And then just this month alone in January, the Nasdaq is up 10% month to date. Yep. That's why you do it. You buy when it's going down, you buy when it's down, you bat, you buy when it's fear in the streets. Well, it's blood in the streets. That's when you buy it. Not when everybody else is jumping on. And then the rewards are coming out. I mean, you saw we posted about, you know, Nike. We jumped in on it on our last earnings call at the beginning of at the beginning of December. It's up 53% from there. We jumped in Tesla. Well, we talked about it last week or two weeks ago. We well, jumped in on it, but we was talking about last week how, or a couple weeks before that, how when it started getting settled with Twitter, when it started getting settled with Twitter, then Elon Musk will just go back to dealing with Tesla, then Tesla will take off. So we're grabbing shares there, grabbing shares there. Then look at Tesla after earnings these last couple of days. That's that's how it works. I mean, we can point out a whole bunch more, you know, Facebook and Meta, whatever you want to call it. And jumping on them when the price is down has been very beneficial for the people that's in the know. It's been bad for the people that don't know because people ain't going to get into Tesla again. The Tesla's back up to 300. Oh, now it's a great time to get into Tesla. It was down here at 120, 116. And nobody even thought to touch it. Crazy game. Crazy world we live in. Yeah. But with all that being said, guys, uh, if you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family, leave a comment, and we'll see you guys in the next video.